Instead of organizing into squads dictated by the Codex Astarte, the Space Wolves chapter forms their battle brothers into packs. These packs fight like the Fenrisian Wolves do during their hunts. The Space Wolves have four primary types of packs in their chapter, including the Blood Claws, the Grey Hunters, the Long Fangs, and the Wolf Guard. All Space Wolf neophytes will start off in a Blood Claw pack. As the youngest and most inexperienced warriors within the Space Wolves chapter, the Blood Claws are the most eager combatants on the field of battle. They are fierce, often foolhardy warriors, eager to prove themselves and earn the respect of their elders. They will take almost any risk to win the fleeting glory that only youth and courage can bring. Confident and fresh, the Blood Claws are constantly abuzz with the belligerent enthusiasm of youth and the excitement of having ascended to the rank of the fabled Sky Warriors. Both savage and fiercely aggressive without exception, the Blood Claws have not left their glory-hunting Fenrisian tribe roots far behind and are willing to plunge headlong into the thickest of fighting regardless of the foe they have faced. The Blood Claws' infamous Berserker charges are known throughout the galaxy, for they believe in their own invincibility and dare anyone to prove them otherwise. Blood Claws are still intoxicated by the opportunity to tread in the legendary footsteps of the giants of the chapter, and have finally been given the chance to become true heroes themselves. This knowledge, combined with a barrel of meter too, make for a fine line between their insane acts of heroism and those of reckless foolhardiness. Blood Claws are always trying to find a way to make a name for themselves, and by doing so come to the attention of their Wolf Lord. Unlike their contemporaries for more orthodox chapters, the Sons of Rust do not train through the predictable logic of practice cages or assault corridors. For the Eldar Space Wolves that oversee the Blood Claws' development as warriors, they believe that the best training ground is the white-hot fury of the battlefield. Often Blood Claw packs are not discouraged from taking positions at the vanguard of the chapter's great companies, for their elders encourage the young warriors to learn the art of combat through direct experience. Unfortunately, the Blood Claw's glory hunting frequently leads them to overconfidence in their own abilities, and because they lack the skill and patience of their Grey Hunter brethren, this results in them often biting off more than they can chew. It is not unusual for a Blood Claw pack to rush forward to engage an enemy commander or champion, sometimes with disastrous results. For this reason, a wise and experienced wolf guard often accompanies the Blood Claws in order to curve their worst excesses and battle lust with stern commands and the occasional fist to the face. In battle, the Blood Claws are formed into large enough packs so that they may sustain a few casualties and still prevail. Lapses of martial discipline are usually overlooked by the pack's wolf guard mentor until after the battle, for with the proper guidance, the savagery of the Blood Claws charge can turn the tide of battle. Most Blood Claws are treated as shock troops for the Space Wolves. They prefer to fight at close quarters and are armed with melee weapons such as chainswords and bolt pistols. But there are also two subsections of the Blood Claws. The Sky Claws are one such subset of Blood Claws. This specialist unit is composed of the most headstrong troublemakers from each Blood Claw pack and are often rewarded by reassignment to the Sky Claw Assault Packs and thus serve as the chapter's equivalent of Assault Marines. Entrusted with a jump pack, this vital piece of war gear provides the young warriors with the opportunity to indulge in their desire to charge headlong into the thick of battle. It is said amongst the most experienced battle brothers of the chapter that if the youngsters wish to indulge in their bloodlust, then let them, and if they die in the process, then at least they will learn a lesson. Though considered a dubious honor by their more mature brethren, the Sky Claws are bound and determined to prove themselves in the eye of their elders. Unafraid and uncaring, they soar fearlessly through the sky in great leaps, taking great joy in watching the enemy crumble beneath their reckless fury of their airborne assault. Truly the most rebellious and free-spirited of the Space Wolves, the Sky Claws are constantly trying to prove themselves. They are known to compete against packs of Blood Claws through friendly contests of athletic prowess, drinking and eating. Spontaneous and foolhardy, the Sky Claws are known for their fondness of practical jokes. Although transgressions that cost the lives of their fellows are punished severely, even the Wolf Lords admit that they were once young and so they overlook these offenses. It is rare for a Skyclaw to be exiled for his reckless deeds, but those that push their luck too far and commit an offense against the chapter are assigned a punishment that fits the crime. One who has caused the death of a senior member of the Space Wolves may be struck down, only to awaken to a new life as a med servitor. Another subset of the Blood Claws, the Swift Claws, are called from the ranks of the Blood Claws when the chapter needs a swift and hard-hitting assault force comprised of bike squads and land speeders. The young and ambitious Blood Claws are well suited for this role. In addition to forming a light assault force, Swift Claws will occasionally be tasked with a dangerous quest to track down and slay a particularly powerful enemy. Given the opportunity to sow the maximum amount of carnage and disruption possible, these young warriors apply themselves with a particular relish in the performance of their duties. Some Blood Claws are so taken by this role, 
not to mention the opportunity to raise havoc that comes along with it, that they demand their right to permanent positions as a swift law. Unlike other chapters that use the bike squads primarily for forward reconnaissance, the Space Wolves use these bikes in demolition and close assault roles. If something needs to be blown up or killed in a spectacular fashion, then there are no finer operatives amongst the Adeptus Astarte than the Swift Claws. If the members of any Blood Claw packs ever mature and become capable warriors, they will eventually be elevated to the veteran rank of Grey Hunters. It is the Grey Hunters who comprise the main body of the Great Company. These warriors are still hungry for honor as any of the younger brethren, but their raw aggression has been tempered by battlefield experience. Nonetheless, the Grey Hunters stand ready to give their lives in the name of honor. Each Grey Hunter pack can be a small army in its own right, their oath of brotherhood binding them fast in the face of impossible odds. The transformation from aspirant to full-fledged Grey Hunter may take solar decades or even Terran centuries, but should a blood clot not find his death upon the field of battle, the transition is all but certain. A Grey Hunter's hair begins to gray and his canine teeth lengthen. His skin becomes more tanned and leathery, and in extreme cases, his eyes yellow and transmute until they look like wolf eyes. These physical signs, borne by the Grey Hunter, mark them as having come into the heritage of a strong and mature battle brother at the peak of their powers, truly worthy of the name Grey Hunters. This name is well chosen, for they are the masters of the hunt, stalking their enemies as they might one of the giant Fenrisian wolves. The Grey Hunters track their prey with a cunning and patience like a wolf pack. Laying down discipline overlapping fields of fire, the Grey Hunters drive the enemies to seek cover. Once the prey is surrounded, only then do the Grey Hunters spring their deadly trap. The Grey Hunters will either leap at their foes like savage beasts that have long stalked their quarry, or they will draw the enemy forward by feigning weakness while waiting for the perfect time to strike. The battle ploys and cunning of the Grey Hunters are legendary. It is this uncanny calm and patience which distinguishes the mature warriors of the Space Wolves from the fiery young Blood Claws. Over time, most Blood Claws and Grey Hunters die in battle, and only a small minority survive to reach a venerable age. But those that do are amongst the most renowned warriors in the galaxy, having fought in the most nightmarish conditions the galaxy has to offer. The collective skills of such venerable warriors are too valuable to throw away upon a blood-soaked assault or a desperate quest for vengeance. These veteran Space Wolves are formed into packs known as Long Fangs. Steady of hand and temperament, they are entrusted not only with the protection of their brethren, but also the heaviest of weaponry used by the Sons of Ras. It is said that the Long Fangs know the soul of every weapon within the armories of the Iron Priests, and take every opportunity to prove it on the field of battle. Long Fangs are the Space Wolf's equivalent of the Codex Astarte compliant chapter's Devastator Marines. These dour and grizzled warriors have survived long enough for the genetic inheritance of the Canis Helix within the gene seed of the Primarch Lehman Russ to manifest fully, as they are literally endowed with long fangs. As the Space Wolf continues to age, their canines lengthen into wolf-like fangs, and their hair and beard grow thick and gray. They once hungered for honor, just like their brethren when they were younger warriors, eager to earn a place within the chapter sagas. Yet the hot steel of youth has been tempered by honor and pragmatism leaving veteran warriors as finely balanced as the keenest blade. The Longfang's solid and reliable demeanor is precisely why Longfangs excel in the role of fire support units. In battle, the oldest Longfang of the pact is entrusted with selecting enemy targets and directs his brethren's fire where it will be most effective. These squad leaders are able to anticipate the ebb and flow of battle with an uncanny precision. This enables them to function way more efficiently than the Codex Astarte Devastator squads. There are relatively few long fangs within the chapter, for so many warriors die in battle that only a minority survive to reach a venerable age. Nevertheless, after centuries of long wars, their esteem within the chapter stands as a mountain, commanding awe and respect from all their lessers. And finally we have the Wolf Guard. The Wolf Guard are an elite band of seasoned warriors, comprising of the mightiest champions of each great company. Heroes all, every member of the Wolf Guard is personally handpicked by their wolf lord to be his personal bodyguard. It is his deeds that mark a wolf guard rather than his age. So there are hot-blooded young warriors as well as sturdy veterans amongst their ranks. Each has fought hard to earn his place, for only those that consistently prove their heroism through acts of valor and skill are deemed worthy to join such a hollowed company. In battle, they form their wolf lord's sharpest blade, bearing their choice of specialist war gear they lead the great company's battle line, or seize vital targets in strength. It is the dream of every Space Wolf warrior to join the elite ranks of the Wolf Guard, 
and they will fight all the harder when their wolf lord is nearby in the hope that their valor will earn them the right to join this legendary brotherhood. Within the Space Wolf's chapter, battlefield promotion is extremely common, for wolf lords are men of conviction and instinct. There is no special criteria for elevation to the rank of the wolf guard. The surest way is to save the life of a wolf lord in the heat of battle, for it is the sacred duty of the wolf guard to be the sword and shield of their lord. These chosen brethren are favored by their wolf lord with the best weapons he has at his disposal, antique weapons of immense potency and ornate artifacts of ancient origin. Few can stand before these heroic warriors, equipped as they are with the best war gear in the company's armory, making them virtually unstoppable in close combat. Each wolf guard is expected to fight in the style at which he excels, for their lord cares little for their former roles in their former pack. Not only does the wolf guard serve as the bodyguards for the lords of the great companies, but also as mentors for the younger space wolves. They are excellent role models for their battlefield experience and raw talent has earned them their esteemed position. The members of the wolf guard may lead less experienced packs into battle or form a retinue of the mightiest warriors of the great company. The most heroic member of the wolf guard, typically the warrior judged by their lord to be a natural born leader, will be granted command of his great company's wolf guard. Known as a battle leader, this wolf guard is the champion of his company, trusted with its overall stewardship in the absence of their lord. To be named battle leader is a rare honor that few space wolves will ever ascend to, though those that achieve such a position are truly heroes within a company of heroes. With every swing of his axe or order issued to those around him, a battle leader is responsible for upholding the honor of his lord. If a battle leader sufficiently proves himself and earns the respect of both his fellow wolf guard and his great company, he may well find himself next in line for leadership when his wolf lord finally passes into legend. Every space wolf warrior dreams of a place in the wolf guard. To be a member of this selected company is to wield the ever deadliest weapons of war for a great wolf company's armory is always open to the personal guard of its wolf lord. So do many wolf guards choose to don suits of sacred terminator armor, the most formidable personal plate available to the chapter's warriors. The actions of these warriors can turn the tide of any war. Packs of wolf guard terminators form the spearhead of many of the space wolf's attack, where they can scorn the foe's defensive firepower as they advance to tear the throats out of the enemy's battle lines. On rare occasion, a great company will armor all of its wolf guard and commit them to a single war zone, deploying them as a hammer blow to crush all resistance. The legendary Thunderwolves dwell amongst the remote polar crags of northern Azaheim, making their lairs within the fabled mountains of the Maelstrom. Many Fenrisians venerate the Thunderwolf as a spirit totem, for the mighty beast is undoubtedly the apex predator in its domain. Only the Space Wolves have the constitution to hunt them in their frozen realm. The perpetual ice storms would flay the skins of any lesser creature in ours. There are several known instances of senior Space Wolves tracking down and breaking in Thunder Wolves. This practice, thought to be an initiation ritual into the upper echelons of the Wolf Guard, has given rise to the legendary Thunder Wolf Cavalry, a small but elite within the ranks of the Wolf Guard, who remain absent from any official Imperial records. The Thunderwolf Cavalry is a closely guarded secret by the Space Wolves. Thunderwolves are giant Fenrisian wolves that stand about the height of a Terran rhinoceros and are used as mounts by the most elite members of the Wolf Guard. These great beasts are near mythical, and they are augmented by the chapter's Iron Priest with adamantium jaws, imperial bionics, and back jointed metal limbs that end in razor sharp blades. The havoc that these creatures are capable of creating is said to be startling to even the hardened veterans of the Adeptus Astartes. Though there exists a high caliber vid capture of a trio of Space Wolf cavalry riding into battle against a large mob of armored orcs, the Space Wolves deny the practice of riding beasts to war. Yet rumors abound across the Fenris sector about the glorious charge of the Thunderwolf cavalry. And the reason the Space Wolves continue to deny the practice of riding these beasts to war is because they are technically semi-sentient Xenos in the Imperium's eyes. 
And those are the major packs of the Space Wolves. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. What I found interesting when I was reading this lore is that I clearly remember how big into the Space Wolves I was when I first started playing. And I feel like if you start playing 40k at, an, at a young age, you are more likely to be drawn to the Space Wolves. But then as you get older, that kind of goes away a little bit. And that's kind of what happened to me. Even reading this lore, uh, it was nice because like the lore is interesting but I don't know if I would ever play Space Wolves on the tabletop anymore. Their aesthetic and their whole thing is more of like, um, I don't know, it just doesn't fit with the whole um, theme of like what I see 40k as. Um, I mean, you have Space Wolves riding on wolves, uh, so it's, it's just kind of funny. I don't know, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section below. But again, I hope you guys are enjoying our content. I will talk to you tomorrow. This was Gershwan with One Mind Syndicate signing out. Oh, if you could put my freedom first in any situation.